Live, I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, some of my foundation distance work and then also commitment and creating drive. Um, so let's first talk about how I do some of my distance work. So the big thing is, is that, come here, come here. The big thing is, is that I really want my dogs to learn that they can go out and they can do things. That they can go out and they can go pick a line, find obstacles on the course that they need, and go from there. Um, so a big part of that is I like to shape a lot of my commitment. So by that I mean I want my dogs to really drive towards whatever it is I'm working in. In this instance, we're going to use a cone. You do not have to use a cone. You can start with hoops. You can start with jumps. Although I do recommend when you're first starting out with a young dog um, to really, I would focus more on using a ground obstacle such as a cone or as a hoop. So we're not trying to add jumping or weaving or contacts into that mix. So I do start with cones because I feel that they are a nice middle ground. Um, I can use the cones in the house, as you can see. Um, I can use them in small spaces and really work on my distance, my directionals, uh, my handling, timing, all that sort of good stuff. Um, so I do start with cones, and then I can use the cones as kind of a middle ground between this foundation work and when I apply to obstacles. Um, in kind of in a nutshell, what I end up doing with these cones is when I want to start sequencing and I want to start adding more distance to my sequences, I will take this cone and go put it out next to a jump, next to a hoop, to teach my discrimination training, I will put cones in between, say, the contact and the tunnel. So when I say out, my dog knows to go to the outside of the cone. Here means to come to the inside of the cone. Um, so it just helps my dog transition from a lot of these groundwork exercises to out, you know, sequencing and out on the actual agility field with equipment. So I'm going to use Allie here. She's done a ton of cone work. Um, and so she kind of knows what's up. But what I want to show you is first of all, sit, nice, wait. First of all, I want, come here, sit, wait, good. First of all, I want to let her kind of understand some of the body language, right? Good girl. So she understands right from the get-go because of all this foundation work I've done that if I'm setting her up, sit, and I give her a lower body cue, She's going to take that as she wants to go around the cone. And I shaped the cone with her. So when I shaped it when she was a puppy, is I basically stood here and I gave her no body language in the beginning, but I stood here and when she gave me an interaction with that cone, say touching it, going around it, anything like that, and we'll wait for her to give something. She says, I haven't done this since I was new. Good girl. Um, I want to shape an interaction with the cone. I want to shape her to want to, <laughs> to be around the cone. And I do this exact same thing with equipment. I want to build value for the equipment. So I'm gonna build value for the hoops by shaping them to go to the hoop. So I'm gonna stand next to a hoop and that's how I do some of my commitment work that we're gonna talk about, is I'm gonna stand next to the hoop just like this cone here. And when she interacts with it, I'm gonna give her a yes and toss a treat or toss a ball or whatever my reward is. And it's the exact same thing with jumps. I'm gonna have the bar kind of low, maybe down four, eight inches. If she interacts with the jump, I'm going to reward that. So I'm building value for the equipment. Um, it's the same thing here. I wanna build value for this cone so that when I go to apply it, you know, out in the real world, um, and I stick that cone out next to a jump next to a hoop, and say it's a difficult sequence for adding some distance on, when I say get out, and that cone is next to the jump, what that's going to do for me is she's going to see that cone and be like, oh, there's my cone. I'm going to go out around the cone, which carries her, you know, out to the jump, out to the hoop, you know, through a tunnel, whatever I happen to have it set up, it is going to give me that. So that's why I do the cones as kind of my middle ground between cone to equipment. So building value is a huge, huge component of distance work. We need to build value for the equipment. So I need to build value, not just for fun things like, you know, tunnels and contacts and weaves also get tons and tons and tons of reward because, you know, it's a more difficult obstacle. So we're gonna reward a lot for um, good contact behavior, excellent weaving, all that sort of stuff. But when it comes to hoops and jumps, we tend to not reward as much. So I wanna build a lot of value for, you know, this 
cone or this hoop or this jump, whatever it may be, so that when I start doing more and more distance, right, I am going, my dog is already looking out, seeing that jump, seeing that hoop, and they understand that, you know, they, they've built, I've built so much value for that piece of equipment that when I say go and give that cue, she sees her jump, she sees her hoop, and she's going to drive towards it. And if I'm having an issue with her driving towards it, if maybe it's a difficult sequence, whatever it may be, right, I'm going to take my cone and go put it next to that jump. Um, or the hoop, or in between a contact and the tongue. Whatever it may be, I'm going to help her with some of my foundation stuff, which is coming back to the cone now. So when you practice the cone at home, things to keep in mind. Your body positioning, and it's going to be a little different for everyone, depends on what your directional cues are, depends on all that sort of good stuff. It's going to be a little bit different, but I'm going to give you an example for myself. Now, my body positioning, I'm going to reward her real quick for being on the bed. Good girl. Um, my body positioning determines the directional that I'm using, right? So the cone is directly in front of me, so for me and my dogs, if my dog is here, or even if she's here, when, for this body positioning, this is a go. Because a go means I want her to go nice and straight, right? So this is a go. She's going straight to the cone, right? And I want to build that value because go is important in distance work. If I've got three jumps in a straight line ahead of me, I say go, I really want her to continue up those three jumps. So keep in mind with your handling positioning, this is probably a go. Now, if I sidle over here, now this is an out, right? My dog is moving laterally away from me, and I'm going with them. So that's going to be more of an out, as opposed to if I'm standing right here, this should be a go, right? Inside of the cone for me and my dogs, when I say here, that means to move to the inside of the cone, which means it's going to be me, dog, cone. They're on the inside towards me. A switch means for my dog to turn away from me. And I want to talk about switch just real quick. Come here, Papa. Good girl. Switch means for my dog to turn away from me. So a switch could look like this. Hi, you're being so good. Okay. Switch. Oh my gosh, we forgot. Let's try it again. Not the bed, I swear. I promise. Wait, let's try it again. Switch. Yeah, that's it. Swag a girl. So that's a traditional switch. She's coming off of my hip. <laughs> Good girl. And she's turning away from me, right? So another switch, and she's still working on this. Another version of switch, I'm going to move it a little so we're not on hardwood. Here, pop, pop. Move that. That's beautiful. Yes, yes, because in our book, how I trained it with her, switch is turning away from me. So she's turning off the side of me. You are such a good girl. She's turning off the side of me, or here, she's turning off the front of me. Um, so when playing with the cone, make sure and think about your handling positions. Um, I see a lot of videos that are floating by and I'm getting tagged in um, with some cone work, which is awesome. So happy to see everybody out there doing cone work. Um, but what I am seeing a little bit is some positioning errors. Um, this, the handler will be here and saying out when in reality it, it needs to be more of a go. Or they're here and saying go, uh, that sort of thing. Which is fine if that's the picture you have in your head. You know, if, if you're out just means move away from me, whether that means vertically or laterally, then that's fine. But I know that these same people are that we're going and we're attaching it to sequences, and now this was a goal with the cones. Now it's be, or excuse me, they were saying out with the cone, but now it really should be a go, and we've done it with the equipment, and the dog doesn't quite understand the transition because all their foundation work, this has been out, and now all of a sudden, now that it's three hoops in a straight line, it's a go. So be aware of your handling positioning. I always write down everything. I write down all of my directionals and I write down what they mean to me. What's the picture I see in my head? When I tell my dog switch, what's the picture I see? That's a big thing. So when you want to start doing this distance work, think in the terms of we want our dog to really have value for all this equipment. So I'm building value for this cone, which I can then use to build value for hoops, jumps, discriminations, all that sort of stuff. And I also shape 
my, my hoops and my jumps and all that sort of stuff. So I'm building value for, in my opinion, the lesser obstacles. We don't spend as much time doing a lot of high reward stuff or going through a hoop as we do for refills or our contacts. Um, so something to keep in mind, I want to build value for my dog driving to that hoop, driving out to that jump. So definitely something to keep in mind and something that you can do right here in your living room in that you want to be able to stand here and your dog can offer some behaviors with that cone and you can start adding more and more distance to where you can say go and they look for that cone because you've built value for it, which you can then turn around and use out in the agility field. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Um, and I will answer them as soon as I can. Sometimes I'm a little delayed in my answer, but I will try to get back to them as soon as I can. Um, and I will be doing more of these Facebook videos with more information. Um, tomorrow, I'll probably be putting out a video that's going to talk about more, excuse me, talk more about my discrimination work as well. So any questions, please put them in the comments below. And don't forget to visit, visit www.fluidmotionagility.com. Thanks.